Alright then guys, what's going on? Metal Raymond here and welcome back to part 2 of the update video. Today we'll be covering the rest of the update post including all the tiny little quality of life pieces and we're gonna be checking out stuff like the event and other update pieces inside of the game as well. Hope you guys look forward to it, I do want to go through it a little bit quicker this time around because there is quite a few things we're gonna have to show in game as well and I want to show you guys how to do the event and a lot of other things. So, um, with that being said, today we're doing a double $50 bond for two different giveaway winners. If you want to enter that, all you need to do is of course subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment your ring game name down below and turn on the post notifications. You don't know that you entered the giveaway, I wish you all the best of luck on that. If you're new to Runex, you want to try it out for yourself, this is the best time to do so. Use the link at the top of the description to sign up for the game. And last but not least, make sure you join the Runex Discord and my own private Discord. Links for both of those will be in the description down below as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, let's go ahead and hop right into it. Alright then guys, last time we ended it off with the small patch note of the tree farming. And today we're starting it off with a bonfires and fire making. You now have the ability to add logs to the new large bonfire at home, but it gives 10% less XP than manual fire making. Fire making now is a rare chance, slightly less rare manually burning logs versus bonfires, to encounter a fire spirit. Fire spirits have a rare chance to give random noted gems, charms, task bottles, and they have a rare chance to give an uncut onyx and even an uncut xenite or a fire spirit path which is cosmetic and it does not apply to the skilling path collection log so it's strictly an extra path as far as i'm personally concerned i feel like it would have been fine to add to the skilling path collection log because it is basically a skilling path but either way it doesn't matter too much at, at the end of the day does it guys the next up skilling tasks the skilling task system is better than before increased coin rewards per task from 2.5 mil to 10 mil coins remove the requirements to bring back the resources streamline the interface similar to picking up canceling slayer tasks so it just makes it a lot smoother altogether completing skilling tasks grants xp for the skill type scaled based on the current level of that skill capped at 20k xp Lower the length requirement of most skilling tasks, added rooftop agility course tasks, removed the onyx cutting task. So a lot of improvements in terms of that just makes it a lot smoother altogether. And then with the new skilling area that we showed in the previous update video, it makes it so much better altogether because like gems like topaz and uh, the other one, red topaz, opal and jade, those three were, are now a lot easier to obtain and a lot of other things which just makes it so much smoother and it's really really nice. Other miscellaneous killing things. Aerial fishing is now available at the fishing guild. Requires 75 fishing and hunter and gives mahi mahi. I don't know if I pronounced that correct. That can be exchanged at the fisherman NPC. Rare chance to obtain crystal keys and sunken treasure caskets as well. Crystal saw costs 20 skilling points, grants 5% constric construction XP boost, grants hidden plus 7 construction, construction boost allowing you to build things 7 above your current level. Apparently construction is a very difficult word for me, I'm sorry. Barbarian gold, gold nuggets from barbarian skilling method can be spent on lambs, bags of tokens, prize boxes, points boxes, so that's pretty nice. There are now Lucky Implings, these are pretty damn cool, but they are a very rare impling that can give Task Scroll Caskets and Grandmaster Task Bottles. So uh, if you find those, you're a lucky son of a bitch. It will announce in the yell chat basically when one spawns and it can be anywhere from free to play zone to puro puro to inside the wilderness to the legendary zone, like it could be anywhere as far as we have seen up until now. There's new Dark Graceful Die Enchantment, requires one blue, red and green die, which you can buy from the skilling shop and 250 marks of grace, and that allows you to use it on a graceful set to make it, um, you know, the dark set. There's a new Elixir of Sprite, gives a 5% skilling XP and 25% skilling pet drop chance for 60 minutes. Really nice if you're hunting the skilling pet collection log, you probably want to get a juicy amount of those. 500 marks of grace are, are rarely from fire spirits, sunken treasure caskets and bird nests. Okay, so you can buy them with marks of grace or rarely get them from fire spirits, sunken treasure caskets and bird nests. That's pretty cool. Tiaras cost 20 skilling points each, gives 2 times runes of that type, stacks with rune, uh, the, the rune crafting cape and elemental gloves, that's pretty cool but not super useful, runes aren't that hard to get. 
And then the bird nests, these uh, are I'm pretty sure new altogether. Added to wood cutting, gives dag enough rings, high tier seeds, bags of riches and task bottles. And there's a rare chance for a crest piece and a very rare chance for the ancient rings. Ancient rings are the god rings for those of you that don't know. So you have like the ring of law which boosts armadale gear, ring of war for bandless gear, etc. We've added a much better looking make interface for skilling across the board, so kind of more similar to old RuneScape style. Just a lot better altogether because we were uh, a little outdated on this particular screen department. Alright, the Halloween event 2021. The Halloween event is here too, note from the developers, this time around we're going with a new approach for events. Rather than the typical free to play roaming monster hunting that we are usually getting, events have also unfortunately been a bit too rewarding, oftentimes being detrimental to the economy and game balance so we've toned that down slightly. I full heartedly agree with that, um, I don't think it's a good thing that whenever an event came out for like last summer event as an example, some people just just did that, just the summer event for two months in a row and they cleared 20 or more chests and they bring in so much money to the economy and that's just like one person going hard on it but you gotta imagine all the different people clearing those chests for epic pet boxes bringing really rare pets into the game you know you might not pull one but someone else might have gotten that Borg, that treasure fairy that uh, angelic swift eagle the the oculus owl really rare pets that are meant to be hard to obtain suddenly dropping into the game like fucking flies because the events are so strong so i full heartedly agree with that events will still be plenty rewarding but we are pivoting from events being a get rich quick moment which is really good in my opinion Instead we want them to be as intended, additional fun and festive content for the players to enjoy. It should be apparent that we are now focusing most of our dev efforts on permanent content rather than event content which gets wiped slash deleted after two, one to two months. Just really glad to hear that and I think this update both shows a lot of that being true because altogether this update is a fucking banger. <laughs> Crossover team, uh, there's an Easter and Halloween crossover. Due to Runex not having an Easter event during, to, uh, during our data center fire when we got the uh, Runex leagues, there are some spooky Easter teams blended into this event. We have also brought back some old Easter items in the event's coin shop since they were missed out on. So every time you clear a chest, you get a few points. And if you save those up, you can use those in the coin shop. For now, also previous Easter event items that are discontinued. Now here is the mini quest, Frankenstein's Castle. Um, you must help Dr. Frankenstein build his monster, speak with a Grim Reaper at home to teleport to the castle and begin. This repeatable mini quest requires you to do various skilling related activities inside of the mansion to help the doctor find six different body parts required to build a monster of his own creation and bring it to life. So over here we can open this up and you can see it in a bit more detail. Castle furniture, search bookcases, fireplaces and any other furniture in the castle. You will commonly find slime ectoplasm and garlic and an uncommon chance to find the left leg. Backyard rubble. The backyard of the castle has piles of rubble that can be mined with a pickaxe. You will receive spectral rocks and an, an uncommon chance to find the left arm in the rubble. Ecto slimes. You can only slay them by using the slime ectoplasm found from the castle furniture. They commonly drop Halloween tokens and an uncommon chance to drop the right leg. Malnourished bunnies. Restless spirits from the Easter event which never came. Damaged by spectral rocks. I love how they put that. They commonly drop Halloween tokens and an uncommon chance to drop the right arm. Vampires. Throw garlic in the coffin upstairs to lure out vampires. Kill it with wooden stakes crafted from the backyard's tree. Vampires drop Halloween tokens and a chance for a torso. The Smuggler. You can exchange 10 times sinister ashes dropped by vampires for a decapitated head by speaking with the Smuggler which can be found on the third floor of the castle. As you can see it's very 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 different from the usual events we get but it's a lot more fun, uh, it has a more of a theme to it and I just like it a lot altogether. Like I really, you can tell they put some effort into this even though they just said we're not gonna focus too much on these events that are gonna disappear in one to two months. If this is like low effort, then I would say they're doing a gosh darn good job at it. You earn Halloween tokens throughout the mini quest and receive 2500 tokens for completing it. Completion reward ignores hourly caps. After completing it, you can repeat it for additional rewards. You also earn a one-time rewards for repeating it X amount of times. So here you can see a little animation of it making the monster. There you can see some of the boosts. If you get a, uh, at one time, you get an event activity scroll, 50,000 tokens if you do it three times, and another event activity scroll if you do it three times. 
a guaranteed reward is the 2500 tokens. Now what are the event activity scrolls? After completing the mini quest for the first time you receive an event activity scroll. You can use this scroll to unlock one of the following activities. Skilling, Raids or Slayer. Skilling will earn tokens from doing skilling tasks, Raids will earn tokens from raid completions and boss kills, and Slayer will earn tokens from completing Slayer tasks. Once unlocked slash activated you will, for the rest of the event, earn Halloween tokens from that activity. You can earn more scrolls from the mini quest repeat system or from the event coin shop. This is similar to the cycle activity system that we used to have but it's constantly running once unlocked. A few notes to clarify, these scrolls are not tradable, these scrolls are wiped after the events are over so don't waste them by trying to save them for the next event and unlocked activities will reset after events are over so you'll have to unlock them again for the winter event etc. Pretty good altogether, I like that. Um, I haven't done it personally, it's already uh, been quite a few days since the update came out but I have yet to unlock it myself. But it seems like a good idea. If you do a lot of scaling tasks, unlock that one. If you do a shitload of raids, do that one. If you do a lot of slayer, do that one. And I just passively build up tokens as you're actually focusing on other content. And I personally like that. Uh, and the minigame itself just looks fucking banger. Once we go in game, we'll go a bit more in depth on it, even though this is already pretty in depth. Um, but show you guys how to run it. Now we have a new challenge mode system. You can now purchase a challenge mode orb from Diango at Edgeville Shops. Challenge mode enforces the following. Your damage dealt is decreased by 20%. Curse prayers cannot be used. Elixirs cannot be used. Pets cannot be used. Equipment gear bonuses are kept at 200. What does all of this mean? You're fucked. Good luck. GG. Sit down. <laughs> no, <laughs> jokes aside, this is... Uh, it, it really bottlenecks how much you can do. No longer can you use Soul Split to heal. You will deal less damage. Your stats are even lowered, so that will deal more additional uh, less damage. You can't use a pet, so you're missing out on potential drop rate bonus pet, or you're missing out on like damaging pets, accessories, all of that stuff. And elixirs cannot be used, so you can't use infernal elixirs to boost your damage and all of that. Pretty rough. What do you get for that instead? Challenge mode grants the following. Drop rate is increased by 35%, so that's already compensating for the fact that you can't use a uh, luck pet. Especially good in something like Night Terror and Nightmare where you can't use a pet in the first place. Challenge points are earned from kills and it's spendable in a brand new shop that you can see on screen right now. So there is uh, quite a few nice little rewards in there and I personally really really like the Christmas crackers in there. A solid way at last for players to earn uh, Halloween, uh, no, not Halloween mask, but party hats for the merchant who can ask for that occasionally. It is also a requirement for an elite achievement where you have to kill every boss in the game five times on challenge mode to get the elite achievement done. And then you have unique tasks and rewards as well that are on screen right now so you can check that out as well. So you have defeat all bosses at least once as one of those tasks. Defeat uh, 10 expert plus cox raids doesn't have to be affliction so just normal expert plus tops, uh, chambers and top and then defeat 5 night terrors which is a nice epic pet box which is pretty cool and I complete all the challenges uh, to earn the following rewards the challenges jet pet and the challenges icon. Whether that pet does something or not is currently unknown, no one has it yet, but it is pretty cool. And then on top of that, um, yeah, it's a pretty rough challenge. You can click here to view your challenge mode kills and it will keep track of all the monsters in the game that you need to kill at least once. And there are definitely some rough ones, including a bunch of superior monsters. The next up we have the Wandering Merchant Changes. Alright, so changes have been made to the Wandering Merchant tasks and we have introduced some new unique rewards. Added some new item requirements across the board. Golden M boxes removed from the Wanderer task. Blood Venus effect task is fixed for Wanderers, which was meant to be a frozen wife and shield. Exotic mystery boxes and the untradable version are added to the shop. They cost 750 for the tradable and 500 for the untradable version. They both have a limit of one per week. It says two per week, but it's actually one of each per week. The special mystery box is an exclusive table of rewards that cannot, cannot be obtained from any other reward tables in the game. Also contains some very new unique rewards, which are quite rare. Bonus replay scrolls, exotic mbox reward, resets your daily money making tasks and rerolls your two times money making tasks. 
Chaos Lock Tokens gives 1 to 4 drop rolls for PVM kills. Not a huge fan of this personally, I'm gonna be brutally honest with y'all. Uh, although it's nice that it's a potential 4 times drop roll, it can also give 1. So you would use a scroll and you get a drop as if you didn't use a scroll. Not a huge, huge fan of that, I know they're called Chaos, but I believe personally it should be 2 to 4 because then it always works like a luck token at least, and it's an additional chance to be 4. Because when it's 1 to 4, the average is 2.5, right? Like on average, you'll get 2.5 times drop roll. So it's not reliable to use on something like Night Terror when an epic luck is guaranteed 3 rolls. That is just my two cents. Of course, if the, these are the only luck token you have, you may as well use them. But not the biggest fan of the 1 to 4 drop rolls, I'm gonna be honest. Then there's the Ring of Condensing Exotic Mbox Reward. 70% chance to note resources gained from skilling while equipped. Pretty damn useful, could really have some nice places where uh, that could come in handy. Soothsayer Pendant, now this is huge, gives 15% drop rate bonus. By far the new best in slot necklace for drop rate bonus by a whopping 12.5%. The previous best in slot being the collection pendant. However, it must be worn 30 seconds before the boost activates. So you can't equip it in the last second to get the drop rate boost. Which is a little unfortunate, but understandable at the same time. Plus, it's not an untradeable item, which means you can't use it in dangerous areas such as the wilderness, unless it's your protected item, or at something like Night Terror. Keep that in mind. Necromancer's Tome boosts all PVM damage dealt by 33% when having a summoning familiar out, which is pretty interesting. Boosts damage dealt by summoning familiars, including special attacks, by 50%. Personally, I would have to do some proper testing with that before I can say whether it's good or not. Um, it might depend on what your other pet options are, right? Like, if you were to get this tome before you get something like a Wraith pet or a Bork or a Berserker Titan, it might come in handy. I mean, PVM damage by 33%, that is not a small amount. Shadow Rend Sword uh, has a 50% chance to deal 2 times damage on hit, 15 second cooldowns between damage boost activations. Attack speed of, plus, uh, of the weapon is plus one faster when using the accurate style, and the damage of the weapon is increased by 33% when using aggressive style. A really, really nice sword, looks very cool, we'll do a little bit of testing with that as well. The Stormbearer Fang exotic handbox reward attaches to the Trident of the Seas to make a Trident of Storms. Storm Trident auto casts a lad Lightning Barrage spell, hitting a 3x3 area similar to Barrages. Lightning deals 50% more damage to targets that were recently hit with a water spell, 10 second threshold. What kind of water spell? Well, it has a special attack that summons a rain cloud, dealing high water damage to enemies. So basically, using the water uh, special attack combined with the lightning ability, you could pack a lot of damage on stuff. Alright, with that being said, we already covered this in a previous group armor video because we knew it was coming from the death block. But when running 4 plus affliction rates, there is now a bad luck protection system that can help prevent large dry streaks. You are now guaranteed a purple after 20, 15 or 10 dry on Expert, Master and Grandmaster in that order. So if you do 9 Grandmaster affliction rates on Chambers, and then the next one you run, the number 10, will be a guaranteed purple drop. So incredibly good, so nice, so many people were not running raids anymore because it just didn't feel worth it, it was too expensive, we never saw drops, yada yada yada. Huge, 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 huge system upgrade for us. The system does have some limits though. Guarantees are counted separately for each mode, therefore you can't do 9 expert raids and then switch to Grandmaster for a guarantee for example. Guarantees are counted separately for each raid type. You can't do 9 Grandmaster Cox and switch to TOB for a guarantee, for example. And getting a purple before, you, before your guarantee will reset the guarantees counter for all difficulties of that raid type. If I understand it correctly, that does mean that if you do 9 Grandmaster TOBs, you didn't get a purple, you start running 10 Chambers of Xerix, get a purple from uh, ch uh, Chambers of Xerix, then it won't reset the TOB one, but if you do, let's say, you know, you know, if you're on your way to a purple on TOB, you're at 9, but you get a drop on the 9th, it will still reset. You won't get a guaranteed back-to-back -back purple on your 10th, because it just reset. And of course, if you're at like 19 dry on expert, so to say, and you get a purple on your first Grandmaster, because you're suddenly switching game modes, then this first dry streak will reset as well. So that's important to keep in mind. I hope I am fully correct on what I just said, but probably.
All right, last but not least, a whole bunch of gameplay changes, quality of life and bug fixes. My goodness gracious, we're already 19 minutes in and we're not even done. Bad accessories now give one, uh, one, uh, well, half potency during affliction rates. Drop rates increase by 5% for non-affliction tables rares when using 5 afflictions. Non-affliction table rares when using 5 afflictions, okay, interesting. That only works with 5A. Rare drop rates for Chambers of Xerix improved in both normal and affliction rates. Pressbearer T pieces created via Platinum Token Shop cosmetic upgrade only. Fixed broken equipment set bonuses uh, button on custom item guides interface. Interesting. PvP armor def de degradation reduced to 250 charges per death for Plankermans. Used to be a thousand charges, now it's 250. Promo coins have been added to the currency pouch. Ancient maces added to the Narda sarcophagus uncommon table and added as a 1 in 10 chance from the sand mummy, so they should be more obtainable. That's lovely. Reduced prices from some of the PvP training grounds and added bags of tokens to the reward shop. Ornament armor added to the fancy storage and POH. Crystal keys added to Rockrat's daily reward list. Um, three times point M box added to skilling daily skilling task daily reward list. Fucking tongue twisters up in this bitch, man. Fixed a bug that calculated magic defense incorrectly and used the player's magic level instead of the enemy's magic level for calculations. This change will affect the way you find high magic level opponents like King Lava Dragon, for example, making them harder to defeat when using magic. That's rough. Uh, a bunch of new summoning scrolls that can be used for a bunch of different uh, monsters. Let's have a look at one. Scroll special buff to restore 50% run energy on the Spirit Terror Bird instead of 15%. Seems like there are some interesting changes, some healing, mm, healing, 10 pure essence on cast, Lava Titan, passive effect, gives secret mining level boost of plus 10, increasing mining speed, interesting stuff. Steel Titan, Room Minion Tower and Spirit Phoenix summoning special attack, max hit increased by plus 10, might actually be worth using, who knows. Vote exchange changes, some prices slightly lowered and reward amounts slightly raised. Example, give 25 luck tokens instead of 15. Brimstone key rate formula is now 225 minus NPC max HP. Previously it was 160 minus NPC max HP divided by 3. This does not change the boost from scrolls or the minimum drop rate. All this will do is make higher HP NPCs more profitable and less HP NPCs less profitable. Out plus one, that, that's, that's a good one. Curse crit reward amount increased from 3 to 4 per chest to 4 to 5 per chest. Really could have used that a few weeks ago. <clears throat> Elixir packs added to Mystery Shot Shop for 350 shots each, 2 in stocks per week. All gem loots from picket pocketing NPCs slightly buffed. Sacred Titans now drop between 1 to 3 tokens instead of a guaranteed 1. Amethyst Golems now have a Sacred Tokens added to their drop table alongside of Ancient Shots. Ancient Shots on the table are now 1 to 4 instead of 1 to 3. Interesting. Prayer restored from Holy Grazier and Holy Sanguinesti is now 2.5 times greater than before. A nice little change, but I wish they changed the proc rate, because the Holy Sang just almost never activates. It, I feel like the effect itself was already good, it's just that you almost never see it activate, which made it not so good. And now it, that hasn't changed. <laughs> Vespin Shortbow effect of 33% accuracy and 20% damage against Poison Foes is now 66 accuracy and 40% damage. Vespin Shortbow spec damage amount increased by 40%, increases viability as a defense lowering spec weapon to be on par with other defense lowering spec weapons. The impling catching daily money making task has been added, so you can now do that. All daily money making rewards slightly buffed to be more appealing and help mid game a lot more. Calphat Queen drop table slightly buffed to be more appealing. Lizard Shaman drop table, uh, Demonic Gorilla drop table, Zora drop table have all been uh, improved to be more appealing. Uh, what is this one? Point boxes chest slightly buffed to be more rewarding, that's nice. Superior Slayer Tome added to the Runex point shop for 250k points as an alternative method of, of obtainment. So you don't have that, you used to buy that in the Slayer shop only. Cypher Fitur got nerfed into the ground from 185 to 125 slash bonus. Strength bonus is lowered from 150 to 150. So you won't notice much in terms of max hit, but the accuracy has been decreased quite a bit. Scythe of Sanguinesti and the Holy Scythe of Fatur have their slash attack lowered from 205 to 150, so also nerfed by... Well, this one is by 60, and this one by 55. So not as bad, but still a quite significant nerf. 
And strength bonus is lowered from 160 to 155. A bit more on that one. Twisted Bow is now on Captain PVM. It fucking slaps. Magic level of Zora increased by 125, making Tebow stronger and magic weaker. Magic level of the Chasm Quaker phase 1 increased by 125, making Tebow stronger and magic weaker. Magic level of Cerberus increased by 125, making Tebow stronger and magic weaker. Gravity Bliss has reworked, now deals damage based on how heavy opponents are. Enemy weight formula, biggest factors are size of NPCs, if the NPC uses melee and how big or fat the NPC is visually. For example, bloat in TOB. Interesting. Definitely interesting. I didn't even uh, read that one yet. Slayer Staff E. Task damage boost buffed from 5% to 15. Chasm Quaker Soak effect on phase 2 reduced from 50% to 25% when all golems are dead. That is great. Star the Mysteri Mysterious Casket is buffed, gives more coins and rune coins, and now gives Catalyst, Luck, and Epic Luck tokens. Added new Raid Protection. I'm guessing that's the one previously mentioned. Uh, Spirit Elixir fixed to give 5% scaling XP. I mean, they were just added. PvP Equipment, uh, double mention. UIM Daily Rewards, now all go to the reward cover. I think this is now for everyone, by the way. Fix an issue where you lose some items when dying with over 28 capped items. The remainder will go to your bank or on the floor if the bank is full UIM. Fix the bug where the Apostle Sire or Zora kills, sometimes counted as 0 to 1 seconds, etc. Et this would ruin leaderboards. Fix a bug where Ultimate Phoenix Pet was giving all runes instead of just the ones the Phoenix Pets give. Fix an issue where Dark Totems would still be uh, consumed when selecting the Scutizo option while teleporting somewhere else. Fix Twisted Dragon Hunter Crossbow not working on Almond Hydra. Fixed experiment number 3, no blah 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 blah, remove one giant boot from the ancient orn lug. So, a lot of fucking changes, Jesus effing Christ, I can't believe this took 25 minutes to cover. I feel like I should have gone a little further on the first uh, part, because this was a lot, a lot, a lot. Alright then guys, we covered everything I really wanted to cover um, with the clips during the update post, like while we were going over it. I don't think there's a whole lot else to show. I was gonna do the uh, Halloween event originally, but I think I showed enough of the footage on how to run it during that. There are some other details that you can take in place, like, uh, well, if I have to give a short description of it, you start off by talking to Dr. Fra Frankenstein, he'll tell you what to do, he needs help to create his monster. He will also tell you if you ask him where to find which item and what body parts, just similar to the update post. Uh, you want to cut a lot of trees, get the stakes ready, cut a lot of logs, or sorry, cut a lot of uh, rocks, mine them, not cut. Mine a lot of rocks so you have those ready, kill a bunch of bunnies, a bunch of the slime, search the bookcases, the fireplaces. Repeat all of those steps until you have uh, 10 garlics, you can kill 10 of those vampires. You will get the body parts along the way, get 10 ashes and then trade that in for the hat to make the full body. That is the long story short, and there are ways to get uh, additional Halloween tokens during that. Um, uh, the, the tips my group Ironman Buddies gave, for uh, for example, are also a side note, a guest will randomly appear when you are doing pretty much any activity. You saw that a few times during the clips. Just have the Ecto Staff equipped and it will hit four times for 25 damage. It can drop anything in the minigame, garlic steaks, slime, ectoplasm, and around 100 to 120-ish Halloween tokens. So that is a good tip right there. Uh, note, the only two ways to obtain garlic is by searching furniture and the randomly drops by guests. You will also find the uh, left leg in the castle furniture, that is also important, yada yada. Um, another thing he said is uh, that it may be a decent way to cap out your 10k tokens each hour by doing the Ecto Slimes as they are fast killed. Or no, wait, the Malnourished Bunnies is the one he mentioned. Uh, you, you get about 30 to 50-ish Halloween tokens per kill, so if you mine a shitload of rocks and just kill the bunnies, that is an optional way to just grind out the tokens specifically along the way. I mean, honestly, do it how you want to do it, and as you're doing your first run, I was just doing it shortly, I wasn't gonna completely finish it anyway. Um, I already got a feel of like, oh, well, I could do this and I could do that, and if I improve upon this and this piece, I could be a bit more efficient, and all of those small little details along the way there. So I think if you guys start running it, you will get the same kind of results. I kind of wanted to test, I test out the items for y'all a bit more in detail, but unfortunately I don't really have the gear for it. I don't have like a max pet and max strength gear and all of that. Also an another interesting note is that the Soothsayer Pendant has minus 50 in every single stat, so it will decrease your max hit by quite a lot by having this equipped. 
Obviously, you need to have it equipped for 15 or for 30 seconds to get the drop rate boost. So, like, if you're killing something like Cerberus, you're gonna have to have it equipped the entire time. This sword is pretty nice. Look at that right there. It activated the strength bonus, even though it does have a cooldown on it. It went from a 51 to 109, and this isn't even close to max gear. This pet has no accessories. There is so much room for improvement to make this better. Like, it's a pretty damn cool sword. And of course the storm bear, uh, yeah, storm bear, right? No, trident of storms. <laughs> Tridents of storms is like a barrage casting spell, so you kind of want to use it on multiple targets at once, and all of that good stuff. I really wanted to show it off in more detail, but I didn't really think about getting like some max setups to test it out with and all of that. If you guys would like to see that in the future, I'm down with it. But if you guys give me a few months, I'll probably have done the group Iron Man as well. Maybe some other people unlock it along the way and they will tell you how they perform and all of that good stuff. So I think we'll find out either way. There are a lot of small things I didn't end up showing with clips because they are just too small to, you know, like showcase. I can't show affliction rate luck and all of that stuff or every single summoning pouch. I don't really want to bother you guys with that either. But there are definitely some really cool items in this update altogether. It is a banger, there's just so much to do. I've been playing straight for the last two days for at least like 16 hours a day, I ain't gonna lie. I sleep very little, it is so incredibly addicting. From Elite Barrows to the Skilling Zone, there's just so much new stuff to do. Raids with more guarantee. I've been playing this much and I haven't even touched the Halloween event on my own account yet. I just haven't gotten around to it, there's just that much to do. So if there was ever a chance to give Runex a try, I would highly recommend you do so now. I think there's even more amazing stuff on the horizon. I would uh, expect more updates of this quality. Um, there is some talk about Hunger Games. I would love to see that as well on here. For those of you that don't know, Spawn PK recently got Hunger Games. The servers are owned by the same uh, person. And it's a really addicting minigame. So I, I would love to see something like that on Runex as well. Let me know what you guys think about that. Altogether, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I wish I could show off uh, more detail on some of these items and some of the new equipment and whatnot, but, you know, I did what I could with what I have right now. Like, for example, I wanted to show all the uh, barrel items and all of that stuff, or the new pickaxe. Well, the pickaxe I could show a little bit, but I think I also did that in the first update video. It increases your max hit a lot. If you use the spec, you boost to 119 mining. The higher the level, the faster it will mine. So you'll see a significant increase in, like, using a room pickaxe on the Halloween event versus this pickaxe, for example. So yeah, all together. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll check you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day, everyone.